Alain. Alain. Your Royal Highness, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Science is driven by challenges and by challenging questions. Technology is fueled by science and the need for solutions. Today, I will share some examples of how researchers are using science and technology to provide answers to critical questions related to food, climate change, and the environment. One of the most calorically important crops consumed worldwide is maize. This is especially true in Africa, where maize is the most widely grown crop by harvested area. Because the maize grown in Africa is mainly rain-fed, it is also vulnerable to the effects of climate change. So we pose the following question. How will climate change impact maize production in Africa? And how well can we make that projection? Ken Strepek and Susan Solomon are climate scientists at MIT who are analyzing climate models to understand the model uncertainties and to more precisely predict regional changes in climate and food production. In particular, they have been looking at maize in Africa. Professor Solomon was chair of the IPCC for seven years, sharing in the Nobel Prize with Al Gore in 2007. Professor Strepek works extensively with policymakers across Africa on climate's potential impact on water and food in the region. Susan and Ken used a set of climate models to simulate 122 possible climate futures. They linked this to an FAO crop model for maize to see the likelihood of maize production rising or falling in sub-Saharan Africa. Climate models are run on computers to make projections. In this case, the models were used to estimate changes in temperature and rainfall from the present through 2090. As a turbulent river might carry a log to one bank or another, climate models also fluctuate. By throwing many logs into a river, you will discover whether the log most often goes to a particular place, and you will understand how accurately you can predict the fate of the next log that you throw in. So Susan and Ken ran multiple climate models to get ensembles of projections. With these ensembles, they could generate statistics and evaluate the uncertainties of the projections. Consider the median results across 20 different simulations run under a high warming scenario, uh, about a 4 degree C increase in global average surface temperature by 2100. The areas in green showed significant increases in maize production. The areas in orange showed significant decreases in maize production. The areas in light gray showed little or no change. The areas in dark gray were not simulated. And importantly, the areas in white showed large changes, but changes that went in both directions. In other words, it was as if the log thrown into the river was equally likely to go to either bank. Trend-wise, in tropical Central Africa, the model showed no significant change, suggesting resilience. Uh, this is due to high rainfall. In Southern Africa, widespread yield losses were projected as a result of increasing aridity. Similarly, in the Sahel, increasing aridity is likely to cause losses, but the uncertainty is high and in these very arid regions. Finally, Sub-regional yield increases are, are likely in the Horn of Africa due to increasing rainfall and in South Africa and the Ethiopian highlands due to increasing temperature. What atmospheric science shows us is that uncertainties are large and increase with increasing aridity. Different agricultural policies will clearly be needed in different regions, and these policies must be adaptable to a range of possible climate futures. In another example, science and engineering helped to build the first green revolution with fertilization, mechanization, and irrigation that resulted in huge yield gains. But this growth also came with costs. Fertilizers can run off into waterways, promoting algal blooms and harming ecosystems, and enormous amounts of fossil energy are consumed. Take, for example, the production of ammonia fertilizer to provide nitrogen to plants. This process consumes approximately 3% of global natural gas supplies. 
and potash for potassium fertilizers is largely mined in the Northern Hemisphere, but cost and distribution are barriers to its use around the Southern Hemisphere, where it is often most needed. These considerations lead us to an obvious question. Can we enhance crop yields more affordably and without harming the environment? In this area, engineers are working towards solutions. Let me give three examples. Chris Voigt is a biological engineer at MIT who aims to reduce the need for nitrogen fertilizers. Soybeans can fix atmospheric nitrogen through a symbiotic relationship with bacteria that live on the plant's roots. Chris is working to transfer this capability into maize, potentially blunting the need for ammonia fertilizers. These grains might provide access to high yields without the cost and environmental consequences of ammonia. Antoine Alenor is a materials scientist. He is working to obtain potassium from local rocks rather than by shipping in mined potash. He has demonstrated that potassium can be obtained from K feldspar, which is an abundant resource in the Southern Hemisphere. He has developed this idea in Brazil and is now moving to try it in Malawi. Kartish Montiram is a chemical engineer. He is also tackling the problem of ammonia fertilizers. He has a concept for electrochemical production of ammonia from atmospheric nitrogen. His technology could be driven by solar panels rather than fossil fuel, and it could be scalable for local production in farming communities. All of these technologies will res result in lower fossil fuel use and reduced environmental damage. The projects that I've highlighted are just a snapshot of the essential role of science and technology in taking on the major food security issues of this century. Our researchers seek to collaborate with policymakers and practitioners in order to ask questions and provide answers that are valuable and constructive. And this is why we're especially proud to be joining you today as a part of the EAT network, asking questions and seeking answers together. Thank you.